This video introduces a new state of visualization of metabolic processes in biochemical networks. Showing the whole network as a graph with nodes as metabolites and edges as reactions can make difficult dependencies a lot more comprehensible. But this is not a new idea. Making trends in experimental data more obvious is a crucial new feature though. If the data is visually interpreted and the changes between the measured time points are dynamically interpolated, it is a lot easier to get what is going on than by only considering a table of abstract numbers. This video will give you a little taste of the great possibilities this new type of visualization can offer. But at first, you'll get a short introduction into the topic of cellular respiration to bring the biochemical processes back into your mind. Therefore, the focus is set on the two most important pathways of the energy metabolism of any eukaryotic cell. The first one will be the TCA or Krebs cycle, which takes place in the matrix of mitochondria, and the second one is the pathway of oxidative phosphorylation, which is located at the inner membrane of mitochondria. So let's start with the TCA cycle. During glycolysis, a glucose molecule, which is a 6-carbon molecule, gets split into two 3-carbon molecules of pyruvate. If the cell is stressed or energy is needed as fast as possible, the pyruvate can be converted into lactate. But the more effective way to generate energy is the TCA cycle in mitochondria. To enter this pathway, the pyruvate molecule is transferred from the cell plasma into the mitochondria and gets oxidated there to acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is then merged with oxaloacetic acid to citrate. In several steps, the citrate is oxidated back to oxaloacetic acid and the cycle starts again by merging oxaloacetic acid with acetyl-CoA to citrate. For the data which will be explained later, please keep in mind in particular succinate, citrate and malate. Let's continue with oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation uses some side products of the TCA cycle to generate ATP. Mainly, NADH is oxidated to NAD by a chain of enzymes. The energy, which is released by every oxidation step, pumps hydrogen protons into the intermembrane space. This creates a gradient, which then drives the ATP synthase to generate ATP. The use of platelet concentrates is important for many clinical therapies. Unfortunately, stored platelets quickly suffer from a high quality loss. Therefore, they are routinely stored for only 5 to 7 days. But even in this period of time, the platelets undergo a process of decay known as the platelet storage lesion, or PSL. The metabolic changes during PSL are further explained by the new type of visualization of biochemical processes. The most important characteristic of the PSL is being not linear with time. It is assumed that after three days of storage, a strong metabolic transition point occurs, which resettles the whole energy metabolism of the platelets. Therefore, the process of PSL will be divided into three main parts. The short-term stored condition, which occurs from day 0 to day 3, the medium-term stored condition from day 4 to 6, and the long-term stored condition, which marks the last state of the PSL from day 7 to day 10. At first, an overview will give a rough idea of what is going on. The most important change in platelet metabolism during the first few days is a complete conversion of glucose into lactate, an accumulation of ATP degradation products, and the lowering of TCA cycle activity. In the medium term stored platelets, the TCA cycle activity increases again and the accumulated ATP degradation products are disposed. 
After six days of storage, the decay of the platelets gets faster and leads to total cell lysis. All the changes in metabolism from day 7 to 10 are suggested to be irreversible. In the next step, a closer look at the characteristics of some specific metabolites will give a detailed explanation of the processes in the platelet storage lesion. There are several aspects showing that TCA cycle activity decreases during the first few days. Glycolysis stays active, but all consumed glucose molecules are converted into lactate, which is a faster but less efficient way to get ATP. This complete conversion of glucose into lactate marks cellular stress. Additionally, succinate is secreted into the storage solution, which is an indicator for a lowered mitochondrion function. A high consumption of citrate is an attempt to keep the TCA cycle's activity alive, but although the citrate is converted into malate, it seems like the malate cannot be processed further. Therefore, malate is also secreted. As a consequence of the TCA cycle not working properly, only little amounts of ATP are produced. Hence, a lot of ATP degradation products are available, but a lack of ATP arises. Because of the secretion of several acidic metabolites like succinate, malate and lactate, the pH value of the storage solution decreases and causes an inhibition of the platelet function. After four days of storage, the mitochondrial metabolism and therefore also the TCA cycle and oxidative phosphorylation activity increases again. This is apparent by the stop of secretion of succinate and malate and the lowering citrate concentration. It is also assumed that the purine salvage pathway starts recycling the hypoxanthine to a low amount of ATP. During the storage, several metabolites were secreted, which changed the characteristics of the storage solution substantially. Especially the secretion of xanthine finally fires the total cell lysis. It is a cytotoxin and cannot be broken down by the storage solution.